Welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair Explore Session. My name is Jasmine. I'm the facilitator for our session today. Again, I want to thank you for joining us. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. Your camera and microphone are off, so we cannot see or hear you. Third thing, this is just one of many different sessions that we're offering, so feel free to visit that registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded, and you'll have access to that recording within about a week or so. We have a great variety of schools that will be presenting to you today. They vary in size, location, and other characteristics. We hope this session broadens your horizons during your college search. I'm gonna go ahead and announce our amazing presenters from our session today. We have Tufts University, Bates College, St. Mary's College of California, Middlebury College, Fairfield University, and Franklin and Marshall College. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from Tufts University. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Gracie Marshall. I work at Tufts University um, and I am the first to go. So um, I will share my screen um, and introduce you guys to Tufts. Let's see if I can't make it work. Okay, one second. All righty. Um, so Tufts University is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a mid-sized research university located about five miles um, from downtown Boston. We have a little under um, 6,000 undergraduate students and pictured here um, is what we consider our undergraduate campus in Medford, Massachusetts. But we actually have um, five campuses, four of which are in um, Massachusetts. So you can see here um, our, our Medford undergraduate campus. We also um, have what is called the School of the Museum of Fine Arts, which is located in the Fenway district of downtown Boston, in addition to our health science campuses, so things like our medical school and our dental school, also in downtown Boston in the Chinatown district, um, in addition to our coming school of veterinary medicine, hence the cows grazing in the grass in Grafton, Massachusetts. And lastly, we also have a campus in the French Alps in Telwar, France, um, which our students will take advantage of in the summer. Um, at Tufts, we have three schools at the undergraduate level. So when you apply to Tufts, everyone is technically coming in undeclared. You don't have a major, but you do need to, so, need to select which school you're applying to. Um, so either the School of Arts and Sciences, the School of Engineering, or the School of the Museum of Fine Arts or the SMFA at Tufts. Our School of Engineering is the biggest of the three schools, um, with about 75% of our student population residing within it, and about 150 um, majors and minors to choose from. Um, as I mentioned, everyone comes in undecided, and you have two full years um, to declare your major in the School of Arts and Sciences, so that's the end of your sophomore year. Um, and in that time, um, we're hoping that students will be exploring various options. We have what are called distribution um, and foreign language and cultural requirements as a way to facilitate um, sort of that um, wide <clears throat> dabbling between um, our many different options, um, which ultimately um, uh, results in a lot of students studying many different things. So at Tufts, a major is typically 10 to 12 courses, um, and 60% of our students uh, study more than one thing. So whether that's a double major, a major and a minor, one of my college roommates, I went to Tufts myself, um, was a triple major in biology, biotech, and Chinese. Um, at Tufts, we have enough drama and computer science double majors that they call themselves the drop side kids. We consider that a very Tufts-y thing to do, um, and it's certainly encouraged and taken advantage of. Um, in our School of Engineering, this school um, has about 15% of our student population. So it's pretty small. It's about 900 students total, which we see as a wonderful um, benefit as students are <clears throat> um, really 
encouraged um, and will be partaking in project-based and collaborative um, learning starting um, from their first year on campus. All of our, our first year engineers will take what are called intro to engineering courses, things like an intro to coffee making class. Um, the mechanical engineering course is called How to Make Stuff. That is the literal title of a college course that you can take where the final project is to make a mini golf course. How fun. Um, and then your experience also culminates with the senior design project. Um, a big trademark of our engineering program is that we are um, really set on um, producing socially engaged engineers. A big part of that is ensuring that our engineers are quite multifaceted and taking classes outside of the engineering school. So in addition to receiving a wonderful technical education, our engineers will also be taking classes through the School of Arts and Sciences um, through what are called HAWS requirements, humanities, arts, and social sciences. Um, and then lastly, we have our School of the Museum of Fine Arts or the SMFA. Um, so we have students who will be pursuing pursuing one of two tracks through the SMFA, either getting a bachelor's of fine arts, so going to college for art, um, so taking mostly studio art classes with a smaller liberal arts component, or we also have what is called the combined degree, where students in five years are coming away with two bachelor's degrees. So you're getting a bachelor's of fine arts while simultaneously majoring in something in arts and sciences as well. Um, and the School of the Museum of Fine Arts, as the name suggests, <clears throat> excuse me, is the school associated with the Museum of Fine Arts, which is the biggest art museum in Boston and the second largest art collection in all of North America. Um, and students have the opportunity to present their art at the MFA, which is a spectacular opportunity. Um, so I introduced you to our three schools super quickly. Um, with my remaining time, I'll just talk briefly about what students do outside of the classroom. Um, so we are one of the smallest tier one research universities. So a big benefit of being a very small research university is that um, students can engage with it as undergraduates. So 60% of our student body will do research by the time that they graduate, which you can start your freshman year. Um, we also encourage our students to leave our Medford community and engage with um, various communities abroad um, through a number of different options. So Tufts has its own gap year program, which is called one plus four. We also have something called civic semester where students can go um, abroad for their first semester at Tufts to engage in service learning. And then about 45% of our student body takes advantage of sort of traditional study abroad. Um, a wonderful benefit of being so close to Boston is that there are lots of opportunities for real work um, to, to do during your, your time and complement your time at Tufts. Um, and, and Tufts sets you up quite nicely for the real world. Um, so 94% of our class of 2020 um, was employed or in graduate school six months after graduation. Um, here's a picture of um, our, our campus um, just to talk a bit about residential life. Um, you have to live on campus for your first two years um, at Tufts um, and even off campus housing is very campus adjacent. Everything is within about a 10 to 15 walk of um, one another. Here are some pictures of our residence halls and the food, which is excellent. Um, the extracurricular component of the student experience at Tufts is is big. Um, our, our students love to, to get involved in their community. There are 300 student groups um, for students to choose from, whether that's participating in our Division Three athletics, um, going to our lodge or our cabin up in New Hampshire, um, engaging with the community, or just relaxing on the academic quad. Um, and then lastly, um, I just wanted to give some information about financial aid. Um, so Tufts meets 100% of demonstrated need for all of our students, regardless of citizenship status. Um, so Tufts does not give any merit aid, so you're not going to get like an academic or an, or an athletic scholarship. Um, instead, all of our financial aid um, is, is dedicated to need-based aid. Um, and if you want to learn more, please visit our website um, or follow us on Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you, Gracie, for kicking us off. I'm sure that that was not easy. Um, good evening, folks. My name is Tyler Luce here, uh, and I serve as one of the Associate Deans of Admission uh, for Bates College in Lewiston, Maine. So I will share my screen, and we will jump into my part of the presentation. Uh, so let's see here. All right, hopefully you folks should be able to see uh, the presentation here. Uh, we'll get started. So uh, Bates College is a small liberal arts institution located in Lewiston, Maine. So just a little over two and a half hours north of Boston. Uh, you'll notice uh, the quad here uh, looking at Gomes Chapel. You get some beautiful foliage, uh, but I think folks are probably more interested in summer than fall quite yet. Um, as you think about Bates, uh, 
one really important thing is the founding of the institution. Uh, Bates was founded in 1855, and since day one, we welcome women and students of color, which is incredibly important to the mission of the institution, uh, being one of the first coeducational institutions in the United States, uh, one of the first in the Northeast, um, is really important to who the institution uh, is and how we were founded. And certainly as we think about these inclusive values, uh, incredibly important to, to Bates. And so again, been around since 1855 and a great, strong, proud liberal arts tradition. Um, here you'll see a few photos of the campus itself. Um, so as I mentioned, the main quad, uh, frigid winters, uh, I'm sorry, they're including some winter photos. Hopefully we're coming out of that. And this is where you'll see more students now hanging out in our hammocks um, on the alumni walkway. One and re really important piece to the institution is where we're located. Uh, so Lewiston and Auburn, uh, the Twin Cities, as we call them, make up the second largest metropolitan area in the state of Maine. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, it is Maine, so that means about 60,000 residents in the greater Lewiston Auburn area where we're located. Um, we're only about 35 to 40 minutes north of Portland, which is the capital in the largest city. One thing that's really important, and you, you'll note here, is what we call the Harvard Center for Community Partnerships. Bates as an institution has been recognized as a top 20 program in the nation for community engaged learning. So taking what you do in the classroom and finding real world application. Half of our students every semester will be taking courses that require community engaged learning as a part of the curriculum. And what you'll actually find is we have an incredibly diverse and international population right within the city of Lewiston where we're located. Um, Lewiston around 20 years ago um, was designated as a resettlement zone and our community welcomed thousands of new community members that came from Somalia, from Ethiopia, from Sudan, from Kenya. And over the last two decades, you've really seen an incredible change uh, in our community. Um, and you've also seen an incredible growth uh, in really what our community has had. Um, if you notice in that top picture, Lewiston is a great blue collar post-industrial town um, that's really come full circle and blossomed um, as we get into 2021. Um, but you'll also notice some of the time that our students have spent in the community. So again, community-based work is really important. And we also have about 500 acres of land on the coast of Maine. That's our Bates Morse Mountain Conservation Area. So uh, for environmental studies research, hanging out along the beach, it's a great opportunity to kind of explore a little bit more of the state of Maine. Um, you'll notice in these next pictures, uh, a little bit, bit more to that Bates Morse Mountain Conservation Area. Um, and so where some of our students will have the chance to explore. Uh, this is more of a shot of Baxter State Park in northern Maine. So if anyone's ever been interested in maybe hiking Mount Katahdin, that's an opportunity there as well. The next piece is just talking a little bit about the academics for us at Bates. Um, you'll notice 37 majors and 26 minors and 75 what we call GECs, general education concentrations, which are really a mini minor, an opportunity to take interdisciplinary coursework where one GEC will require four courses, but all four classes have to be in a different academic discipline. So again, really pushing you to get outside your comfort zone. Um, with a 10 to one student to faculty ratio, you're gonna know your faculty on a first name basis. And some of the larger programs at the moment include political science, biology, psychology, um, and economics, uh, to name a few. Um, but as you also are looking to figure out maybe something new uh, or unique, I should say, to the Bates experience, short term, is a part of our academic calendar where we operate on what we call a 441. You take four classes in the fall, four classes in the spring, and then one class throughout the month of May. That's our short term period, an opportunity to take just one class. It could be a unique course offering, could be a community engaged course, could be a practitioner taught course where we bring experts from their fields to come teach you the ins and outs of their industry. But it's a great opportunity to catch your breath, dive deep into one area, um, and really get the opportunity to explore. Um, and those images are some wonderful opportunities to see um, what some students have done over the prior years. Um, also, a great opportunity to complete undergraduate research at a small liberal arts college. This can happen as early as your first semester of your sophomore year, and every student to graduate from Bates is required to complete a senior thesis. So an original piece that you will author as a student where over the course of an entire semester, this will take the place of a course. You'll do original research, conduct interviews, do experiments, um, and then ultimately we'll present your work at what we call our Mount David Summit. So an entire day to celebrate the work that students have done um, and really a great moment uh, to kind of wrap up the academic career for our students 
Um, and again, to wrap in community engagement, that can also be something that students can conduct research on um, as they look to connect to the greater Lewiston Auburn area. One of the last pieces that I wanna mention, because again, I think it's so important for you to differentiate as we have a lot of great small liberal arts colleges here today, is what we call the Center for Purposeful Work. This is a new program that's really taken place at Bates over the last five or six years. And its aim is really to align who you are as an individual with a career opportunity. So over the years, we've added a lot of institutional layers, things like funding for unpaid internships, purposeful work infusion courses where faculty may put the learning on hold and bring in guest lecturers who are experts in a given field. That could be philosophy, it could be medicine, but really help you learn from them. Uh, it could be the enhanced job shadow program. Uh, it could be a variety of pieces, but really important for you to get that practical experience. Um, and then just, you see a, a few last photos here, but um, I know we've got a lot of other folks ready to go. So um, that's just a little bit about Bates and, and hopefully we'll get a chance to connect after, but thank you folks. And I will stop sharing my screen momentarily. I appear to be having trouble not sharing my screen. I don't know if Jasmine, you're able to assist here. Yeah, Tyler, give me just one moment and, I'll, and I will. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> I can't exit out here. Perfect. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dorian Roberts, Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at St. Mary's College of California. So we're located in Moraga. Um, which is about 15 minutes east of Oakland and about 30 minutes east of San Francisco. So we have an undergraduate population of about 2,700. Our total student population is around 3,500. And we are a liberal arts college. We're Catholic and we're also Lasallian. We are also an NCAA Division I institution as well. We're rated top six regional universities in the West. Um, our education is rooted in mission and values of John Baptiste de La Salle, who is the patron saint of teachers. Our core values are respect for all persons, faith in the presence of God, concern for the poor and social justice, quality education, and inclusive community. We are diverse. So 57% of our student population identify as multicultural or black indigenous people of color. 31% are first in their family to attend college and 54% identify as non-Catholic. So we welcome everyone at St. Mary's. We are a liberal arts institution, but what actually is a liberal arts education? It is the study of the sciences such as biology, chemistry and physics and social sciences, including economics, politics and psychology. You develop strong critical thinking, problem solving and communication skills across multiple academic disciplines. There's a strong focus on student participation within all academic settings. We encourage a high level of student teacher interaction, mentorship and collaboration. Average class size is 19. Student professor ratio is 10 to one. You could also be in a class size of 10 or as you see in this slide deck, a class of seven. So we really emphasize the small classroom environment to give you as a student the opportunity to build camaraderie with your peers, but most importantly, to build camaraderie and establish relationships with your professors. And at St. Mary's, when I say professor, I mean somebody who is highly qualified, holding a doctorate or a PhD. We do not use anyone who is a TA or only has a master's degree to teach our students at St. Mary's. Finding your voice, we have collegiate seminar. It is the heart of St. Mary's core curriculum and provides students with a solid foundation in the liberal arts. The program comprises four discussion-based courses that examine the great books of literature, philosophy, history and political theory, art and science. Courses discuss great thinkers from Socrates and Aristotle to Shakespeare and Martin Luther King. We have January term. So we're actually on a 414 format. So students take four classes during the spring, 
four classes during the fall, and then you take one unique course during the month of January. So every January, students take one course either on campus, in the community, or abroad, and they explore a single topic outside of their major. As you see, some of the classes the students take are the science of cooking, media representation, and capoeira. We offer a class called Star Wars and Theology. We have a class called The Rise of Nerd Culture. We also have a course called The Netflix Effect. Students may also study abroad during the month of January as well. Students go everywhere, as you see from Ireland. Um, they go to London, Tokyo, Machu Picchu. They've been to Durban. Um, they've been to Johannesburg. So there's a wealth of opportunity for students to be able to explore opportunities abroad. We have 40 plus academic majors and minors. Our most popular are gonna be bi biochemistry and biology, business, engineering, our global and regional studies, justice, community and leadership, kinesiology, performing arts, psychology, and our women and gender studies program. We pride ourselves on student support. So a path all your own, but never alone. First year in transfer student cohorts. We have faculty advisors. Every student's provided a success coach. We have the high potential program, which is available to first generation, non-traditional and low income students of need. You can receive guidance within your major from your faculty advisor, in addition to exploring internship opportunities and post and preparation for postgraduate work. Community at our core, there's guaranteed on-campus housing for two years, more than 60 student-run clubs and organizations, 100 plus student jobs available on campus, and more than 70,000 hours of community service annually. There's a community engagement component that's embedded in all the programs at St. Mary's, which allows you as a student to be able to take your knowledge, skills, and abilities and put them to use in a community near you. 100% of our students first year students actually live on campus. We have 23 club and intramural sports. So if you're interested in playing intramural sports, you can check in um, with St. Mary's on our website. If you wanna be a spectator, you can do that too. We have 16 division one NCAA athletic teams. And so if you're interested in being a student athlete, I recommend um, checking in with our athletic department to find out what it takes to be a student athlete at St. Mary's. Exceptional education worth the investment. So uh, typical school year, tuition is around 50,000, room and board is around 15. Average financial aid package for our students is around 38,000. We also have merit-based scholarships available for first year students that range up to 30,000. They're based on your GPA and, re and a holistic review process. We are test optional as an institution. So the SAT nor the ACT um, is required to be admitted. We have additional scholarships available for students who attend as a transfer student. And we have LaSallean scholarships as well for any student who is graduating from a LaSallean at De La Salle Christian Brothers High School as well. Thank you. And that concludes my presentation. Um, how do I sign up to go to all these colleges? There's so many good choices out there. Um, I'm Glenn. I'm from Middlebury College. I'm going to share some quick facts. Um, Middlebury is a residential small liberal arts college, about 2,500 students. We're fully undergraduate, so students have close connections with their faculty and all the resources on campus are for you, for undergraduate students. Students come from all 50 states and 70 countries across the world. Um, exploration and discovery will be a defining part of learning at Middlebury. You can choose from more than 850 different classes, 49 majors and programs. More than half of them are interdisciplinary. In addition to our main Vermont campus, which is entirely undergraduate, we also have a large network of schools abroad summer language immersion schools and our Monterey in California um, Institute for International Studies. So now I'd like to dive into some details about what makes the Middlebury experience so special. Uh, first, our location in Vermont Champlain Valley offers an experience that's deeply rooted in sense of place and community. Uh, Strong connection to the local environment is central to our identity and it really allows students to take advantage of 
recreational, academic, and community engagement in the town of Middlebury and Vermont at large. So this is downtown Middlebury. Uh, one of the most common questions we hear is about what makes Middlebury different. Obviously, this is why you're here. You want to hear um, why each of us from these different colleges you know, say that you want to go there. So to me, Middlebury holds two identities, and they might seem juxtaposed at first, but together I think is what makes Middlebury Middlebury. So first, we're a small college in a small state, and we have a strong sense of community and connection to place. But then at the same time, we have this globally connected college that places a strong emphasis on cross-cultural understanding with boundaries that exist far beyond our Vermont campus, um, as you can see on this map. This is demonstrated in several ways through our international curriculum and internationally diverse student body, extensive abroad experiences. 60% of juniors study abroad at least one semester, often that's in language immersion. All of these green flags on this map represent Middlebury schools abroad. So we have 37 different schools in 17 different countries across the globe and financial aid and academic support from Middlebury is in all of these locations. Another really unique feature of MID is our academic experience, um, especially our environmental studies program, which is the oldest of its kind in the country. It's one of our most popular majors and it's inherently multidisciplinary. Environmentalism is also a pillar of Middlebury's identity. So we became carbon neutral, go us, in 2016, and we recently embarked on an ambitious new plan called Energy 2028, and it's to have our campus fully run 100% off of renewable energy by the end of 2028. Um, and these initiatives were all student driven, and I think it highlights that emphasis on the student voice in shaping what our priorities are. Another highlight of Middlebury is our J term. We have a 414 academic schedule. Uh, so that means in January, it's a four week condensed academic semester in which students pursue one depth, one in depth academic experience. That could be a class, an internship, an independent study. And then after J term wraps up, we welcome our first year Feb students to campus. Middlebury has one of the oldest, largest, most established mid-year enrollment programs in the country. Uh, FEBs often spend their gap semester pursuing an interest, traveling, holding a job, visiting family, um, or doing or all of the above or engaging in the service project. After completing four years, FEBs take part in a really unique ski, ski down tradition at mid. So this is our college owned ski area. Um, FEBs proudly wear the 0.5 after their graduation year and they join a long tradition of adventurous students that aren't afraid to do something a little bit different. So whether you graduate in the winter or in the spring, mid grads go on to do a bunch of different things with their education. There's a tremendous support from our Center for Careers and Internships in terms of job searching, soul searching, we all know we need that, finding funding for internships, graduate school applications, whatever it might be. And so to give you just a little bit more information, um, our application process can obviously be done on the Common App or the Coalition App. There's no supplemental essays required whatsoever. Um, we are test optional now. We are in a three-year pilot for that. That decision might change and become we are test optional forever, um, but that is above my pay grade. Um, we are need blind in our admissions process for um, US citizens, permanent residents, undocked and DACA students, um, and we meet full demonstrated need for all four years. So that was really fast. And I hope if you have any questions, you'll reach out to me. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is <clears throat> Ben Bears. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at Fairfield U, which is in Fairfield, Connecticut. And I'm actually also an alum. Um, so I'm excited to kind of share with you all today a little bit more about the institution. Um, but let's see here if we can get this cruising. Um, 
So Fairfield's a medium-sized Jesuit, Catholic, and liberal arts institution located in Fairfield, Connecticut. And I'll kind of show you on a map in a second. But I think the most important thing to know, other than being a liberal arts institution, is that our location is kind of ideal for a lot of students. Um, so we're in kind of a suburban community in a beach town, and many students end up living on the beach their senior year, uh, but with access, access to New York City and a number of other cities along the East Coast through the Metro North train line. So whether it's you know internship opportunities, whether it's just for going into New York to see a show, seeing a baseball game or something, lots of opportunities to get involved in that community. Um, I mentioned that we're in Fairfield and that for those of you who don't know is across the Long Island Sound from Long Island. Um, but we're about a couple hours from Boston, about an hour from New York by train, a few hours from Philly, and five or six hours from DC. Um, but as a Jesuit institution, I think it's important to note that we are Catholic, um, but we serve students of all different backgrounds that are of faith and no faith at all. Um, you know, I think the most important thing to remember here is that we are an institution that cares about, you know, your education as a whole person about being a person for and with others and kind of this idea of striving for excellence. So at the end of the day, yes, the Catholic tradition is important to us. Um, a little over half of our students identify as Catholic specifically, um, but it's really about being a, a person who can expand their worldview, give back, um, and be kind of a great member of our world community post-grad as well. You have lots of opportunities to explore your faith if you so choose. Um, whether it's through residential colleges, through campus ministry, or through service of some kind. But regardless, it's kind of ingrained in our education as a whole. It's one example. My dad is a professor of English and American studies, and he takes um, his native lit class out to the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe Reservation every year before his course, um, again, to kind of have, yes, an impact um, off campus, but also to somewhat be embedded in the community for a little bit before learning about it. Um, just kind of quick facts. We're about 4,000 undergraduate students, so a medium-sized, I would say, institution um, with a real focus on undergraduate tradition. And we have about 1,100 grad students. I am one of them, um, but the focus is the undergraduate experience. And we have a lot of different majors that I'll share with you in a moment that you can take advantage of, many of which have a minor attached to them. But we have students from all over the world that are involved in all different kinds of clubs, organization, affinity groups. Um, we have D1 sports, club sports, all that jazz. Um, but our average class size is about 20 students. So depending on the institution that you're at right now in high school, it'll be somewhat similar. You're not gonna be in a massive lecture hall or anything like that. You're gonna have an opportunity to get to know your professors and kind of cruise along there. Let's see here. So when it comes to offerings, we have a college of arts and sciences, a school of business, a school of nursing and health studies, and a school of engineering. And you'll notice that a lot of it kind of falls in that college there, right? And that is because we are, as a liberal arts institution, we have a core curriculum that you'll need to take. Um, does that mean you have to take, you know, the same courses that everyone takes to fulfill that curriculum? Absolutely not, right? So I took a class called the philosophy and chemistry of food as a student at Fairfield. Um, I had classes that double counted towards different majors, minors. I was a communication and music double major with a women, gender and sexuality studies minor. Very diversely interested. I have friends that were accounting majors in the school of business with a double major in music in the college. Um, but regardless of what you end up studying at Fairfield, you will take courses within the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, we have a number of students that go on kind of our pre-med tracks. We have a great five-year education program and lots and lots of opportunities for research um, on campus with our professors being, again, an undergraduate focused institution. Um, again, these are just a few of the options here. The one thing I always like to focus in on is that we do have nursing. Um, and it's important to note that nursing is a direct entry program. So if you want to apply for nursing at a place like Fairfield, um, you put that on your application right off the bat. You can switch into it later, whereas all the others, you can do that. Um, it's a very selective major for us. Um, but again, just to kind of keep it small and provide opportunities for our students. Um, we have a lot going on on campus. We have a brand new school of business. It's pretty bougie, lots of glass. Um, and really, again, Fairfield, a lot of Fairfields on campus. But 
you know, whether it's new dining halls, a recplex, upper year housing, um, and renovating, you know, some of the older buildings on campus, we talk a lot about being a modern Jesuit institution. Um, and so it's important just to note that we're growing at all times. We don't have a massive footprint when it comes to land, but we kind of grow up instead of outwards, um, if that makes sense to you. Let's see here, um, just a quick few little tidbit facts here I always like to throw out there. Um, and I'm just gonna focus in the bottom left one specifically. So for those of you who are stats nerds like me out there, um, with over two thirds of students responding for the past four years, including COVID, um, we have about a 98% placement rate within six months of graduation. So whether that's doing full-time service, whether that's continuing education, um, or even, um, you know, getting a job, right, post-grad, those opportunities are definitely there. It's very connected. Um, yes, lots of opportunities on the East Coast, but definitely um, a number of opportunities in California, Chicago, um, Denver, where I lived last year. So lots of opportunities to kind of get involved and find your fit post-grad. When it comes to finances at Fairfield, um, we have a big sticker price, but many of the institutions in here, I think we'd all say that some of the more uh, higher sticker prices on an institution doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be the most expensive for you. Um, Fairfield happens to have merit scholarship that you don't need to apply for outside of the traditional um, you know, process itself, uh, but um, different opportunities to find funding through the institution, both through grant aid and other things like that as well. That's it. Stoked to teach you a little bit about Fairfield. Great. So I'm going to now take the opportunity to share Franklin and Marshall College with you. Hello, everybody. My name is Philip Morabito. I'm an assistant director of admission here at Franklin and Marshall College. Uh, we are located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, just to give you some geographical orientation. Going to pull up some slides so you can get to see what our campus looks like. So to give you a sense of who we are as an institution, we are 2,400 students total. So on the smaller end, I think of the broader spectrum of schools that you'll probably look at through your college search. But I think what you're really going to find in terms of who we are and the types of people that you're going to find here um, is that really relationships are really key. I think you'll see that folks are going to graduate from FNM and speak about the relationships they have with their professors and with their peers. So that speaks to our size as allowing those opportunities for you to really get to know people personally and to really build those relationships. But at the same time, I think we're large enough to also experience different perspectives and backgrounds that are going to be different than your own and encounter folks who come from different walks of life than you do. Um, our students are coming from 47 different states. They come from almost 50 different countries. Um, they're you have about 20% of our students are eligible for the federal Pell Grant, around 20% are the first in their families to go to college, um, and you're also going to see about 25% of our students identifying as domestic students of color. So we really do a very intentional effort every year um, to create a campus that is a crossroads of the world, and we want you to encounter perspectives and backgrounds that are different than your own. Um, you'll see the community here on campus, I think, is really key, and, and the people that are here um, are definitely going to be very supportive of one another. I think I would definitely describe FNM as a far more collaborative place than it is competitive. Um, it really starts in the college houses. We have five college houses, and that's our unique residential model that we put together. You'll be a member of the college house starting in your first year, and that's where you're going to move in. Um, you'll be very connected to it through a connections course that you will take in your first year. So the connections course is a first year only course, um, and it will be helping you to transition from college level, or excuse me, high school level learning into college level learning and really feel prepared with the skill sets to be successful throughout your four years. Once you're placed into your connections course, that's how you're placed into your college house. And you'll also take that um, course with students who are living with you. Um, and you're gonna be um, having the professor who comes to you and teaches that in the seminar room of the college house. So a very unique living and learning community in the first year, but you'll have that affiliation throughout your four years. So once you live elsewhere on campus, starting in your sophomore year, you can always come back to events and programs. In addition, you will graduate with your college house. So you are going to have a true four year in and out experience with your house, regardless of where you live after your first year. We have over 100 student-run clubs and organizations on campus, so a lot to dive into outside of the classroom, from club and intramural sports to community service groups, Greek life, multicultural groups, political groups, whatever sort of passion that you have outside of the classroom, our students take advantage of it. Uh, you would see FNM students are probably involved in three, four, five, or more things overall. I think it's nice to see that students are not limiting themselves to, you know, exclusive social circles or to feel like, you know, one thing is their entire identity outside of the classroom. They're really taking advantage of everything that's available to them. We 
We have 27 athletic programs here at FNM, so predominantly at the Division III level. Uh, definitely would recommend going to godiplomats.com to get a better sense of individual athletic teams you may be interested in. Um, but you definitely will see a really great balanced student athlete experience where you get the best of all worlds and don't feel like your athletics hinders um, anything that you're choosing to do. Getting into the academic components of FNM, you're going to have until the end of your sophomore year to declare your major. So you don't have to know what you want right now. And it's really great to have that opportunity to explore. Regardless of what you choose to major in, you'll see average class sizes are 17. We have a nine to one student to faculty ratio. So a great opportunity for you to be in a really intimate setting where you can get to know your professor personally. They'll certainly know your name and where you sit in the classroom, but it goes much deeper than that. I think they know also things that are, you're passionate about, things that you are really um, working towards in terms of goals things that may be interesting or challenging to you. So when it leads to opportunities like research, because they've, get, they've gotten to know you, they know you personally, and they're going to invite you into research opportunities. About two thirds of our students will do some sort of research or one-on-one -on -one faculty guided experience at some point before they graduate. So a great opportunity there to do really innovative work that's going to contribute um, in unique ways to the field that you are uh, participating in with somebody who is an expert and scholar in that field. You're overall going to see a very interdisciplinary curriculum here at FNM. We are a liberal arts college, so we want you to get that um, breadth of skill sets across many different disciplines. But at the same time, we want you to have those hands-on experiences and to dig deep into the major or majors that you choose. Um, many students will put together combinations of things. So major minor combinations, they're going to do double majors, our joint studies program, which is a great popular alternative to the double major, um, or some of our existing interdisciplinary programs, such as public health, which is a combination of biology, sociology, and government. Beyond just academic components, there's lots of other ways that you can continue to engage um, with, with FNM and all the opportunities here. Study abroad is a really great option. You'll see about half of our students will study off campus at some point before they graduate from FNM. Um, we have over 200 different partner programs across 60 different countries. So a lot to dive into, a lot to really look at, but you're gonna find good programs for what you're looking for. So whether that's specifically, um, you're thinking about um, you know, specific academic programs or you're looking at um, duration, you know, whether that's a year long program or short term program great options there. We definitely want you to engage with the city of Lancaster. We're in the city of Lancaster in the western part of the city. We're a small city of about 60,000 people. We're about an uh, hour west of Philadelphia, an hour north of Baltimore, about two hours from DC. Um, and when you're looking at life after graduation, the Office of Student and Postgraduate Development does a really great job at helping you prepare for the those next steps after you graduate from FNM. You have an advisor who's assigned to your college house, so you can get to know them in your first year. To wrap us up, I'm going to just briefly touch on our application process. Um, we accept the common application or the coalition application, either one of those. Uh, we are test optional. We've been test optional for about a decade now and will continue to be test optional going forward. Do recommend interviews if you're able to do so. We'd love to be able to have a conversation with you and get to know you personally. There's four total rounds at FNM, two rounds of early decision, November 15th and January 15th at the deadlines there. December 1st is early music notification and regular decision is January 15th. So I'm going to wrap up there and head into some of your questions. All right, thank you so much. We're now transitioning to our Q&A portion to our attendees. Feel free to continue adding any questions you may have in the, in the Q&A section. Um, I wanna encourage all of our panelists to return. Feel free to turn your cameras on and I'm gonna pose a question to the group. Our panelists will respond in the order in which they presented. Question here, please give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Oh, I think I'm first. Um, let's see, um, a fun fact about Tufts. Um, we have many a dance group on campus, but the most popular one is called the Tufts Dance Collective or TDC, which is for people who cannot dance like myself. And it's like a huge tradition at the end of every semester, you go to the, T the TDC performance and it's a blast. So if you can't dance, Tufts is a, a wonderful place for you. Not quite the dance festival, but uh, for us, one fun one, I hope this doesn't scare people, actually, maybe I shouldn't say this to California, but uh, at the end of our winter carnival, uh, we actually have what we call Puddle Jump, which is there's actually a lake in the middle of campus, Lake Andrews. Uh, there is a hole cut in the ice, and as a part of the winter celebration uh, that your senior class will typically jump into uh, Lake Andrews and come flying out to a beautiful fire and hot chocolate. So uh, the Puddle Jump is without a doubt a popular tradition at Bates. 
Um, one of the great things about St. Mary's being at a small institution is that you're able to do a lot of things. We have a student run radio station. So if you are interested in radio programming or having your own radio show, you can do that as well. Uh, one of our student ambassadors loves soccer. So he has a soccer radio program where he talks about the Premier League and MLS. So this is one of the unique things about St. Mary's. Uh, Vermont has a tradition of uh, creamy stands in the summer. If you don't know what a creamy is, you better learn. Uh, it is basically soft serve ice cream, but most soft serve ice cream is about 4% butterfat, but creamies are 10% butterfat, way creamier, way better. The dining hall has three different flavors of creamies at all times and lots of hard pack ice cream. Um, but Middlebury and Vermont is a great place if you're an ice cream fan. Well, I was, I'm going to Vermont, geez. Um, I was gonna say that we have a really cool film festival every year and that's great, but I think I'm gonna go with, uh, we have a number of Turkey on campus. Um, so even the other day, I spent about five minutes evading turkeys on my way into the office. So if you end up at Fairfield, just remember to leave a, a minute or two extra to get around them, but they're pretty cool. One of my favorite f &M traditions is every week we have common hour, typically on Thursdays, but COVID has bumped it to Wednesdays. Um, and it's going to be an one hour basically where there's nothing happening on campus. So there's no club meetings, there's no classes, there's nothing going on. Typically a guest speaker who will come in and talk about topics that are important to our broader world um, and also to our campus community. So uh, tomorrow's is looking at climate change uh, in relative to a public health issue. So looking at it as an individual local public health issue. So really stimulating intellectual conversation conversations that regardless if you're a student or you're a PhD faculty member, we're all coming together and learning together. And there's free pizza, which is also a bonus. Nice. Thank you all for sharing. Um, with that said, this concludes our college fair for today. I do want to thank everyone for joining us, all of our attendees, all of our panelists. Um, I have a few closing announcements. As you exit from our Zoom session, a survey will appear it's approximately four questions, but please complete the survey. It's extremely useful for us as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. Also wanna remind you to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, a recording will be available within about a week or so. With that said, I hope everyone has a great evening. And again, thank you so much for joining us.